So, Mr. Pants. Mr. Pants. Oh, uh, Mr. Pants. It's Mr. Pants is a puzzle game. It was, I mean... <sighs> it's Mr. Pants. Mr. Pants is a crassly drawn stick man. He was created by Lee Loveday in an attempt to bring some quirky British humour to our website. And apparently he sent out a call to try and get an artist to draw him a character and no one would. So just to kind of spite everyone, he drew this horrible stick figure. Which was like a kind of fat matchstick man wearing pants with a bowler hat and a clipboard. So he was completely official. I'm not sure if everybody in America fully understood the concept because what they term pants, Mr. Pants doesn't actually wear. Typical kind of rare story. People liked it. They thought it was hilarious. And then um, not only became popular inside the company, and you know, he was used in several games. So some of the Game Boy titles got Mr. Pants in. He was certainly used in Jet Force, but Answers Pants, Cheat. He appeared in, in Banjo 2, yeah. Uh, one or two places that he started cropping up. He represented us online for some years. Um, and he's also worked his way into some of our games and starred in one of his own. It's Mr. Pants is a puzzle game. I mean, it's along the lines of Tetris in as much as you're moving blocks onto the, onto the space. When you get blocks in a certain shape, it clears. So it was, it was kind of traditional, but it had a, a few neat twists on it. One of the things that um, I'm quite proud about with Rare is that we have basically attacked every single genre and puzzles are something that we hadn't actually looked at at that point. Tim Stamper and Greg Mayles had been talking about how we could come up with a different set of rules for something that was engaging and had depth to it. When I first started, I was sitting next to Paul Makacek, who was a programmer who was working on a puzzle game that had been at Rare for a long time. In 1999, in the early stages of Banjo-Tooie production, uh, Tim came to me with a sheet of A4 paper with a handful of rules on it and, and asked me if I could implement that on a pocket system. During the course of its life, it changed from being a very abstract version of the game, which I think the original version was called Tartan. There was an isometric 3D version based on Donkey Kong, which was Coconut Crackers. I think I think that got shown publicly. So initially, one of our musicians created a bit of music that we put on top of it, which was a piece from Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Suite. And for a while, we did actually call it Nutcracker, while I carried on drawing the graphics, which were beautiful programmer art at the time. But the problem that we had was really, how do we turn this into a product? How do we attach something to it that we could market the game? Um, and get people interested in it. I think it had been um, Banjo's Jiggy Juggle and, and, and that actually had an animation. We had an animation of, of Banjo juggling jigsaw pieces and there was also a Saber Man version. Over a period of time we, we focused on other things and the game kept coming back because we knew that there was something there that we would like to have a go at. Then we were looking for a, an available rare character that would suit this game and Mr Pants was obviously top of the list. <laughs> So it went through lots of different incarnations before it finally became It's Mr. Pants. Ryan Stevenson, who was also fresh to the company, and I, I previously worked on the Banjo Game Boy Advance title, and then I'd been asked to draw Mr. Pants, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure must have been the most difficult part of his entire career. He was poking fun at this part-time project that I was looking at. And one day he quietly drew something and turned around to me and said, this is what it should look like. And I, off my own back, because I was kind of thought it was quite an interesting idea, I went home one night and kind of drew and said, I think this is how you want, want it to work, and brought that in. And um, then I got involved in the, in the it's, it's Mr. Pants team, and that's how I kind of like got in through a side shuffle, as it were. It was beautiful. It was crassly drawn. It was silly looking, badly crown drawn as if a two-year-old had done it. But it had a, an essence to it that was fun. One of the things that I really loved about working on that project after that was Ryan and I were just having a laugh, quite frankly, and trying to make the game as stupid, silly, and absurd as we possibly could. The pair of us sat there trying to be as silly as possible, and so we had an awful lot of input into the design and the, the, the feel of the game. All the design people in the, in the whole of the company were busy on other projects, so basically we needed somebody to do some work on puzzle design. All of testing got a chance to submit some puzzle ideas. I did lots of pictures of stuff. They weren't abstract things, they were pictures, and I think that kind of appealed to them. So I ended up getting the, the gig <laughs> as it were, uh, inventing these puzzles. It ended up being wrapped up in a candy-coloured coat of nonsense. I did something fairly early on um, with Tim saying, can you give me some kind, just give me a load of animal noises, just give Mackie a load of animal noises. 
We decided to have a menagerie of animal and bird noises in there to reward you for all of the different shapes that you could clear. Every time you create a puzzle, it'd make a, a cow move or something, or a chicken would go off. Um, that was about it, really. <laughs> Robin provided uh, an awesome score for it, uh, particularly the main theme tune, which really crystallised the silliness of it and the slight perviness of Mr. Pants. Nice. For the music, it was just, I, I just looked at the sort of hand drawn stuff, thought, immediately thought of rhubarb and custard. Kind of hand drawn. Uh, 70s kids cartoon and it was all wobbly yeah it's kind of wobbly uh, rhubarb and custard was pretty oddball theme tune eyes as well but then there was the band the cardiacs which i really loved and they were also you know just nuts and i thought that's that could probably go pretty well with that but with pants style sounds baritone sax is a pant sound for sure <laughs> He just wrote this absolutely brilliant theme tune with Mr. Pants singing very, very bizarrely over the top of it. Cooey, only me. John worked in test and he did, yeah, he sort of pecked me for like a chicken that went off. He pecked me for quite a while to come into audio. I just wanted to come and do audio, how to do audio. I was ready to go, you know, onwards and upwards. And I thought, well, where can I go within the company? John came into audio to just to work on sound design and do sound effects. And I just got on with them so well. And I hung around and badgered them, badgered the head of audio, Robin, to give me a job that didn't really exist. I think he must have just given me it to get off his back. <laughs> when the game got changed to Mr. Pan's character, we thought he should have a go at the voice, isn't it? Because he's really, he's good, he's just daft, he's good at doing daft voices and things like that. Do, 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 It's Mr. Pants. He did a fantastic job with the voice. It was fun, it was superb. It was, um, it was just perfect. It was Mr. Pants. It was like he was born for pants. He actually did it in his pants. And a bowler hat. It was just really fun stuff to work on because it was just because it was daft and it wasn't. It had to sound a bit pants. <laughs> it was just a, it was just a daft fun thing to work on. Obviously, we needed somebody to publish our uh, Game Boy Advance titles, and we got we got some that were finished and ready to go. So we got Banjo, uh, Game Boy, and then uh, Banjo Pilot and Saber Wolf, and finally it's Mr. Pants. So we negotiated a deal with THQ for all four of those titles. If they, if they wanted to publish any of them, they had to publish all four, which they agreed to. And it meant that, although they were all published, they published a minimum amount of It's Mr. Pants. <laughs> so I think we, we only got like 20,000 copies made. So it probably makes Mr. Pants the rarest of all the rare titles. One of our key themes with Mr. Pants was that we had to put pants on everything. We ended up with pants on pants. So when we got bought by Microsoft, I did a, a little picture for what Mr. Pants um, on the Xbox would be, but all it was was a washing line with a pair of his pants on, and underneath just Mr. Pants online. So that's something that no one really knows about and would never ever get made. But it was funny. If you really wanted to invest in uh, our, our past glories, you should definitely go out and search out a copy of It's Mr. Pants. Lord. At the time, I was always amazed it even came out. It was such an obscure kind of title. I even think it had one of the smallest print runs <laughs> of a rare game. Somebody somewhere started a Wikipedia page about Mr. Pants. And then on the discussion page for this, someone else felt that it demeaned the importance of Wikipedia. And then there was a bun fight on there. Someone else came on and said, well, actually, Mr. Pants is a mascot of a, of a famous video game studio. He has appeared in a number of games and has starred in one of his own. So he's every bit as important as Mario. And somebody else said, don't be silly, Mr. Pants isn't Super Mario. And then Wikipedia had to lock down the discussion page because it was getting out of hand. It was the project that led me from testing all the way into design, which went on to VP. So I'm, I'm quite pleased I worked on Mr. Pants. <laughs> so this is how much I love Mr. Pants. I, I um, recently attended Video Games Live and performed with the orchestra. Um, and at the end I did, did the meet and greet where I have yeah, everybody has like a little uh, bit of paper to saying who they are and what games I worked on. So I had things like Conker's Bud Fur Day, Killer Instinct, Jet Force Gemini, and I noticed there was no Mr. Pants, so I wrote with my marker, Mr. Pants, and put it on there. That's how proud I am of pants. Leave my pants alone!
Hopefully that's helped to explain the um, phenomenon that is Mr. Pants. Those fellows you've just seen are mostly working on Sea of Thieves these days. Check out the E3 2016 trailer. Or, for more making of motivation, set your coordinates for Jetpack Refueled. <laughs>